It's different this year, y'all. It's different. Tonight marked the last game of the preseason before the games really count. And I don't know about y'all, but the season opener against the Pacers cannot get here fast enough. Before we get to that though, right? Let's talk about last night's game for a second. The Pistons beat the Cavaliers last night in convincing fashion, 108-92. And this game was fun for a lot of different reasons. Quick hitters first, right? Okay, so unfortunately, we did not see any of Bobby Clinton during the preseason. He's still out without calf strain. That's a little disappointing. I was really excited to see him in action after watching him shine in Summer League. But there's no need to rush him back. I'm still confident that he can force his way into the rotation at some point this year. Tim Hardaway Jr. started at the three again tonight. And I think it's clear that the only spot that's up for grabs is that spot between he and Malik Beasley at the three. My money's on Beasley. Hey Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Tobias Harris, and Jalen Duran are going to be the other four starters. All right, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. Normally I talk about individual stats, right? But tonight was the final game of the preseason. And with one of the most important regular seasons in the past four or five years a week away, I want to talk about some intangibles tonight between the lines, beyond the stats. First observation. Has anyone noticed how happy Kay Cunningham looks on the sideline these days? He is excited about this group of guys that he's playing with. I feel like year one, he was just happy to be in the league, making the jump to the NBA, to play against the best competition in the world, and win some games along the way. Year two, he looked to make that jump, right? With the year under his belt and a brand new teammate with no ceiling in Jaden Ivey. But unfortunately, the year was lost for him due to season ending surgery on his tibia, though that was good for him long term. And then, last season was just uh, last season, and I'll leave it at that. But now, I believe he feels he can win with these guys. You gotta remember, this is year four for Cade. So he knows what a bad team looks like, and he knows what a good team looks like, whether he's playing on it or playing against it. When he's got competent shooting around him and a rim threat, he's very good, period. All he's ever needed is just some talent around him. The first time that I knew 100% in my mind, without a doubt, that Cade's game would translate to the NBA at a high level was when he played in the Rising Stars game in his rookie season. That was the first time I remember seeing him playing with real talent around him. He wasn't getting double and triple teamed whenever he got past his guy on the drive, or he didn't have 10 eyes focused on him every time he crossed half court. When all things are equal, from a talent standpoint, he shined in that game. His team got the dub, he hit the dagger to win the tournament, and he brought some MVP hardware back to the D. Last night looked very similar to that. In last night's game against the Cavs, like every other preseason game, he had space, he had shooters, and he had a lob threat and a lead finisher at the rim. And he's looked like an all NBA level player, preseason or not. You can just see it. And if you don't, just give it a few weeks. It's K season, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up. The vibes are there and it's different now. Next, Ron Holland is a much better basketball player than I thought he was going to be at this early stage in his NBA career. He continues to impress me. His jumper is slowly starting to look better and better, and I think with work and time, he could become a very respectable shooter in his league. His ability to finish with both hands through contact has been very impressive. His next step now is learning how to play with pace, knowing when to utilize that speed knowing when to pull back when necessary. He does that and improves his jump shot. Man, watch out. Next, last night we were all reminded of why we were all so excited to add Simone Fontecchio to this team last year. And for the first time last night, he looked completely 100% comfortable. Last year, even though he played well, I always felt like he was trying too hard to fit in afraid to step on somebody's toes instead of just playing his game and staying aggressive. That was not the case last night. He was pulling up from 30 off the dribble like he was Steph Curry. And you know what? He was knocking them down too. Even though he did get away with a little forearm on one of those threes, but that's not the point. When he's shooting it confidently, he's pretty automatic. He even had a little humble arrogant smirk on his face after knocking down one of his five threes. And his makes, they're going straight in. See, Fontecchio is a mechanical shooter. And he's got great mechanics on his jump shot. So the balance, the timing of his release, the rotation on the basketball, it's the same every time. It was going in the same way every time. Swish. Now, 
That brings me to my next point about Fontecchio. Did anyone catch that Isaiah Stewart Fontecchio moment last night? I know I wasn't the only one who caught that, was I? Well, just in case I was, midway through the second quarter, right after Fontecchio hit another three, he hard fouls George Niang and knocks him to the floor. And he reaches his arm out to help him up. And guess who's standing right there behind him? <laughs> of course, it's Zay. Isaiah Stewart standing right behind him. So Simone extends his arm, right? And I was sure that Stewart's gonna smack his hand away like he's done before. But surprisingly, he allowed Fontecchio to help him up. Now, I think it was only because Simone hasn't been here a full season yet to fully embrace and understand that we don't do that here. But it definitely looked like Zay told him something along the lines of, nah, bruh, we don't help opposing players up. Come on now, I told you that. And then he kind of gave him a little brotherly push. I loved that. That's dog pound. That's what that mantra is for these guys. It's Detroit versus everybody. And I loved it. It gave me Bill and Beer, Rick Mahorn vibes. Not dirty. Not trying to injure people. Not intentionally crowding shooter space. Not taking someone out the air. But we're not friends in a basketball court. You got your own teammates to help you up. The vibes are there. It's different now. Next, all these guys have bought in to JB Bickerstaff. You know how I can tell? Because the bench unit plays exactly like the starting unit. They're running the same offense, moving the ball, moving without the ball, setting hard screens, cutting hard, playing with intention. Everyone has bought in. The second unit started the second half while the Cavs kept their starters in. And the bench unit built a lead against the Cavs starters. Was it perfect? Not nearly. Were there mistakes? Quite clearly. Turnovers? 19. But how many times did we see where that turnover resulted in the Pistons turning them right back over instead of giving up an easy run out layup or dunk, resulting in a timeout or a commercial break while we tweet about how long of a season is going to be? Nope. Play continued on. The crowd was into it, showing appreciation for the defensive effort while the league continued to swell. How fun was it to watch the number of easy layups off runouts last night as a result of defensive intensity? This team from top to bottom is playing harder, playing together, playing for each other. There's a belief now that they can make some real noise. And the belief just doesn't stop with the players. If you watched the Pistons broadcast last night, you could even hear the excitement in Pistons commentator Greg Kelser's voice, who played for the Pistons back in the 70s and 80s. Last season, he went on record saying the Pistons were finding ways to lose games and that they easily could have doubled their win total from last season. During this game last night, he had to say about four or five times just how refreshing it was to see the Pistons playing gritty basketball. You could just hear the excitement in his voice because he can sense it too. The vibes are there. It's different now. The regular season is finally upon us. A week from tonight, the Pistons will play game one of the 2024-2025 regular season against the Pacers. Home opener, new energy, new roster, new vibes, and most importantly, a new belief. I think all those things are going to result in an opening night victory. I'm calling it now. This is going to be a very refreshing and fun season of Pistons basketball. It's got that feeling of, we're coming. We're coming. No, 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 no. I'm not guaranteeing 55 wins. But I am guaranteeing a significant amount more than 24, Bleacher Report. This honestly feels like the beginning of something memorable. Similar to how I felt in the early 2000s, let's just say 2002, when guys like Dana Barrows, Michael Curry, Chucky Atkins, Cliff Robinson, rest in peace, Mikey Moore, Corliss Williamson, Jerry Stackhouse, John Barry, son of NBA legend Rick Barry, brother of Brent Barry, and you can't forget about the great Ben Wallace. Those guys came here and gave this team an identity. Lunch pail, go to work mentality. Play extremely hard every night. Strap up and play physical defense on every possession, regardless of who's on the court and regardless of what the score is. Diving on the floor for loose balls. Grabbing offensive rebound after offensive rebound. Turning teams over with active hands, leading to a John Barry elbow three ball. Swish. If you know, you know. That's what this team looked like last night and for most of the preseason. And that's what I expect to see all regular season. If you saw any of what I saw, we likely see the game the same way. So you might as well go ahead and like and subscribe. If you saw something totally different from what I saw, let me know about it in the comment section and you'll more than likely get a spirited response. Appreciate y'all hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody.
Peace. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it It's for my city, and the team coming with me Headed for the championship, even if the road is long Legends pay the way for us Legends see nothing in this world can take it from us Don't underestimate our generation When you see us come